2.1 and 2.2, uh, where we are now, because we have to start, uh, is going to be focused on classes and objects. So we can see here, I have main.java, so our, we're going to have a main class, and then our curly braces is going to be all of our methods and fields and the main method and our print statements and all of that stuff. Uh, and there's some words in there I just said you don't know, you're going to learn them. And on course.java, uh, if it'll load, we have the course class. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making objects, course objects, and our course objects are just going to be different courses, and each course is going to have a teacher, a name, and the number of credits you're given, and that's going to be one object is going to have all of those different values to it, which is really, really cool, because a class is a formal implementation or a, of a blueprint of the attributes and behaviors of an object. So take a mouse, for example, a computer mouse. If we were to have different fields for our computer mouse, different attributes of it, we could say the brand name. So whoever made your mouse, that could be a string. If it has a scroll wheel, that could be a boolean. The double could be its battery life. And those are all different fields that make up the mouse object. So we're going to be making course objects. Now first we have to make our fields and our constructors for our course um, class. So very, very cool. So let's make our fields. So our fields are basically variables, and these are going to be the different variables that make up an object. It's going to be the object's attributes. So we're going to set these to private, and I'll explain why we're doing this in Unit 5, because uh, that's kind of a build-off of this unit. So we're going to set these to private because it's a course um, attribute. We don't want to be able to change these in main.java, change the values and all that stuff. We don't want to write in constructor for it in main.java. So we're going to set them to private. And then we're going to give it uh, a, var a variable type, so string. And then let's give it um, a name. So we're just going to do the name of the course. And then we're just going to end it there. And we're going to give the value to null. Uh, when we don't assign a value, it's going to be given null. The keyword null is just a special value used to indicate that a reference is not associated with any object. And the memory associated with a variable of a reference type holds an object reference value, or if there's no object, null. The value is the memory address of the reference object. I know a bunch of jargon, but I'm just reading off the C that you have to know so yeah let's write another one let's do private stream we're gonna give the teacher we'll do private double and we'll do credit given very very cool so now we have our fields and it's underlined because we have not used these fields and java is really really cool because it underlines variables that you don't use uh at all in your code and that way you can just you know get rid of them because they're not being used very very good for organization so now what we're going to do is that we are going to write our constructors and constructors uh initialize the values of our fields so to write a constructor is kind of like writing a method so in our main.java our main class we have a main method so we see we have public static void main and then we have a pair of parentheses and then our curly braces and a constructor is very very similar we're going to write public uh but in, and we're also going to give it a name uh but the name is going to be the file name so to write a constructor name is just going to be the file name so course then our pair of parentheses and our curly braces and our curly braces everything in between there is going to be what is a part of our constructor and like i said earlier constructors are going to initialize the value of our fields now, this constructor is going to have nothing in its parentheses, uh, so yeah, that's very, very cool. And all of this is considered the signature, and the signature consists of a constructor name and the perimeter list, uh, and that's what this is, um, the parentheses, the perimeter list, and I'll explain that with our second constructor. So our first constructor, all we're going to do is just not give them a value of null, so we're just going to uh, give name equal to a value of just nothing, same thing with teacher, just a pair of closed quotations and credit given is just going to be 0.0. .0. Remember, it's a double, so we're going to have to have a decimal in there. And there we go. We just had our first constructor. Now, we can go and start making uh, a course object, uh, but I don't want to do that just yet. Um, we're going to write another constructor. Now, constructors are considered overloaded when there are multiple constructors with the same name, but these constructors all have to have a different uh, signature. So let's write an overload constructor. So it's same name, public, course. Now it has to have a different signature, a different parameter uh, list. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to put in some parameters. And parameters are when we call our constructor, when we build our object, these parameters is what we're going to give 
to give a value to our object. So we're going to give the name of our course. We're going to give who the teacher is. We're going to say how much credit is given. So we're going to do all of that with our parameters. So we're going to do string n, string t, and we'll just do double cg. So when we uh, call this constructor, we're going to give string n, which is going to be the name, and assign that to name. And then we're going to do t for teacher and give that to the value of teacher. So teacher is equal to t, and then credit given, same thing. So credit given is going to be equal to cg. And then we just wrote our overload constructor. Very, very cool. So now what we're going to do, did I spell credit given? No, I didn't. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we are going to write objects now. An object is a specific instance of a class with defined uh, attributes. So it has its own like unique features to it. And every object is created by using a keyword called new. Now I'm going to show you that in just a second. So first we got to call the class that we want the object to be made of. So course, then we're going to give the name. So we're going to do course1, and then we're going to do equals, and then we're going to put in our new. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put in our constructor and a class contains constructors that are invoked to create objects and they always have the same name as the class. Uh, existing classes and class libraries can also be utilized as appropriate to create objects. So now let's write new course because we're writing a new course. This makes it kind of easy. And then we go. We just called our first constructor. How do we know it's our first constructor? Well, if we go to course.java, uh, as we can see here, our first constructor has no parameters. And here we did not give any arguments, any values, or any attributes to our first constructor. So that's how we know which constructor we're calling. In unit 5, we're going to be doing this a ton, but in unit 2, we're going to do something different. We're going to call our overload constructor with the parameters, and these values that we're given in our parameters are called arguments. So we have uh, a name for our course, so we'll do AP Computer Science A, that'll be our name. Then we have the teacher, so the ESIN, I guess, you can do whatever you want. And then the credit given, if you take the course 1.0, because this is a year-long course. And then boom, we called our overload constructor with the three parameters in that order. You have to do it in that order. And yeah, so we gave the name, the teacher, and the credit given. So what Java is going to do is it's going to give the name AP Science A and assign it to the name field, the teacher, the ESIN, to the teacher field, the credit given 1.0 to the uh, credit given field, and all that. Now, we're not going to, in this unit, print out the name or the teacher. That's all unit 5 stuff. Here, I'm just teaching you what um, these objects and classes are. Now, let's make some more. We do course if i can type today course 2 is equal to new course let's do ap computer science principles uh i'll do the easton again this is usually a long course so give a 1.0 credit let's do one more course 3 is equal to new course let's do uh, ap i'll do compare to government because i also have that on this channel I teach that on here, but that's usually a, uh, a semester-long class, so instead of 1.0 credit, we're going to do 0.5 credit, and it's a double, so we are allowed to do that. So maybe doing um, your own coding or FRQs and MCQs, and you have to make uh, a constructor or fields, um, and you're given what you need to make a field. So let's say you need to make a field for money. I recommend using a double because, you know, we have maybe $3.54, so use doubles so you can get access to those decimals and even if you do a double in an frq by accident uh or you're just rushing and you see something and you think oh that'd be good as a double and really you need to return an integer uh you can always use our casting which we learned in our last video on our unit one stuff so casting a double to an integer uh so you can do all that and yeah that is 2.1 and 2.2 so we just did courses not courses classes and objects very very cool and that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe it's free and it really does help me out i have more ap computer science videos if you want to go check those out uh they're really really helpful and all of that and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video adios